to God. Woo! Well, we've been getting into this mystery of the glory on Wednesday nights, and I, tonight we're going someplace with this glory to God, and I believe it'll be a blessing. Amen? Turn with me once again to our text of Colossians chapter 1. Colossians chapter 1, verse 25. It says, Whereof I am made, Paul is talking, I have been made a minister according to the dispensation of God, which is given to me for you to fulfill or to complete uh, the Word of God. How many know that Paul wrote most of the New Testament? Paul had revelation straight from God. It says, even the mystery, everybody say mystery, which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but now, now is made manifest to his saints to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is... Christ in you, the hope of glory. Hallelujah. The mystery of the glory. Hallelujah. Now notice verse 28. Whom we preach, Jesus Christ, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, whereto I also labor, striving according to his working, which works in me mightily. Hallelujah. It is time for the glory of God to work mightily in you. Not just a little bit, not just, well, you know. You know what? We're about to move into the greatest harvest the world has ever seen. I believe it's already started, and I believe we're not going out in a whimper. We're not going out, you know, with our tail between our legs saying, oh, well, we tried. No, we're rising up, and we are going to go out in a blaze of glory. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. The glory of God is working mightily in you. Hallelujah. And, and you've got to ask yourself, am I shining for Jesus? Am I, am I taking hold of, of the things of God? Am I entering in to the presence of God? Am I just going through the motions? Or am I truly entering in? How many know in praise and worship this evening, uh, you could just sing the songs, you know, just songs. Or you could enter in to the presence of of God and let that change you. I, I don't want church as usual. I want a experience with the presence of God. I, I, I just I just crave it. Glory to God. I, I want more of it. I, I'm, I'm <laughs> it is time. Come on, somebody shout, it's time. it's time. Glory be to God. It's time to do great things. It's time to believe that God is a good God, that He loves us, and to, to wrap ourselves in the middle of this. Hallelujah. Uh, you know, the Welch Revival, uh, Evan Roberts, uh, way back, you know, uh, the Welch Revival was, you know, a lay person in the church, Evan Roberts, who began to just cry out, Lord, use me. Lord, touch me. Lord, you know, and he began to cry out in the service, and that glory came on him, and it came on the person next to him, and the glory came on the next person, and the glory of God fell, and the Welch Revival, matter of fact, during the Welch Revival, there was, there was no crime in, in, in that whole area. Uh, the police actually ended up just... Uh, you know, doing traffic patrol for the revival. <laughs> That's it. There was no crime. The, the glory of God changed the atmosphere. Amen? You know, I, I, I want that. You know, when I think of, uh, of, of the Pentecostal movement in the United States up in Topeka, Kansas, uh, just outside of Topeka, Kansas, they were, they were, uh, there was a group of students in a Bible school Charles Parham was the professor there, and uh, they, they, they just started searching. Uh, this was about 1900 on, on New Year's, uh, right there, New Year's Eve, glory to God. And they were thinking, you know, there's a new, there's a new uh, time, 1900. There's a new, something new, something fresh. And they said, what about this book of Acts? And they started seeking 
the things in the book of Acts, and they began to speak in tongues. There was one girl that just, she got frozen, and another, there's people just crying out, people falling on the ground. The glory of God hit that place. Praise God. There's always things like this happening to show us that the move of God is about to happen. How many know one week ago at Asbury University in Kentucky, Come on, somebody. One week ago in Asbury University, they went to the chapel service and they didn't leave. They're still on. I mean, they're still worshiping. They, and and they were, they'd interview the students. How many know people, people talk negative about the young people nowadays? How many know it takes the young people to, to ignite the fire? And there's other universities that are beginning to move in these things. But Asbury, this, I mean, still going uh, 24 hours a day. You know, they just didn't, they didn't stop the chapel service. They just kept, they just kept worshiping and praying and weeping and, and worshiping. And, and they said a, a spirit of joy came in there. They said, they said, now, did someone manufacture this? Did somebody try to do this? The, the news media is up there, you know. And, and the students said, you couldn't manufacture the joy of God like this. They said, we, we, we would have done it before this. No, they said, it's just, it's just God. God, we, now, how many know they had to be receptive? Amen. Every single revival takes a group of people that want to receive revival. Whatever you pray for, that's what you get. If you're not praying for revival, you're not going to get revival. Your prayers are leading you to something. You, what you're pressing into will, will get you to wherever you're going. How many know we need to press in to revival? How many know we need to press in to the glory? I, I, I'm not talking, you know, and I, I heard somebody tonight on, on, well, I won't say what network, but one of the news networks. And uh, they, they were just going on about how, you know, this, they, they asked them about this Asbury revival that's going on. And, and, uh, they said, well, we need, to, we need to get out there. This is a sign we need to get out there and evangelize. Well, that's true, but how many know that th that's putting the cart before the horse? We need the glory to come on us so much that you just begin to share. You begin to, it, 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 the glory is on you so much now that you, you're not thinking about, should I say something to somebody or not? You just can't stop yourself. Are you hearing what I'm saying? They're coming out with a movie just by coincidence called The Jesus Revolution. Now, how many know that this is talking about the, the Jesus movement uh, back, back when they all wore beards and long hair and, and they, you know, uh, they wanted to look like Jesus? You know? and, uh, some people call them hippies. The other ones just called them you know, the Jesus movement. Well, the Jesus movement, uh, Kathleen and I were on the tail end of that, but we, we got involved in it. And uh, it, it, I tell you what, the glory of God was moving in that. And, and young people again, who just wanted the presence of God, that just, did, I mean, just wanted to get a hold of God. Whew. You say, why, did, why does God usually use the young people to fire up the older people? Because usually the older people have already done that, bought the t-shirt, and uh, they're, they're, you know, don't look at me like that. They, <laughs> you know, and, and, they're, and they're not, they're not, it's not fresh and new to them like it needs to be. But let me tell you something, we're about to press into it. We're about to move in it. We're about to see some things that we've never seen before. We're about to see the glory of God the glory of God is about to hit planet Earth like it has never hit planet Earth ever. Did you hear what I said? I, I, I'm talking about, we're talking about the end time climax of the ages. <laughs> Hallelujah. We're talking about the end of, I mean, the boom, the, the crescendo of all glory is about to burst on the scene. Well, it's up to you whether or not you want to be a part of that. And I don't know about you, but I'm going to be a part of it. 
and this church is going to be a part of it. And glory to God, we're going to press right into the middle of this thing, and we are going to get a hold of the presence, and it's going to be glorious. Hallelujah. And more so than we've ever experienced. More so than we've ever experienced. And I've seen the glory. I've seen, I've seen tens of thousands of miracles as I traveled uh, for over 25 years in, in the traveling ministry. I, I saw all kinds of miracles. I remember this one girl came up with a big goiter on the side of her neck. Uh, she's probably in her 20s or so forth. And, and a goiter the size of a grapefruit. Ugly looking thing. But I got excited because I always wanted to pray over a grape. I mean over... <laughs> Over a goiter, and, you know, because I heard all these great stories of Smith Wigglesworth and, and some of these other great men of God uh, that had prayed over goiters. Goiters used to be more commonplace before they, you know, put uh, iodine in, in salt. And so that kind of got rid of that in a, in a lot of ways. But she came forward, and I laid my hand on that thing and prayed. And it shrunk in my hand and disappeared. And she'd had it for years. Just, just shrunk in my hand. We're going to see creative miracles in this hour, in this church, that are going to absolutely ignite fire in this city. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And you know the beautiful thing about that story is that girl always wanted to be on the praise team. And uh, she couldn't because she couldn't sing with that goiter. It, it affected her throat. And, you know, uh, her dream came true. And she got on the praise team right after that. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Turn with me over here to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah is a prophet talking about the end times. Isaiah chapter 40. Let's go down here verse 3. It says, The voice of him that cries in the wilderness, Prepare you the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. How many of John the Baptist fulfilled that? Glory to God. Every valley shall be, and it goes on. Verse 5. The glory, everybody say the glory. the glory. The glory of the Lord shall be revealed. And all flesh shall see it together. All flesh. We're talking about a worldwide revival. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. The end times really started on the day of Pentecost. You say, well, that's a long time, 2,000 years, yeah. But a day under the Lord is 1,000 years, so it's only been two days for God. I mean, you know, he doesn't wish that anyone would perish. He didn't desire anyone would perish. But all would come into the knowledge of Jesus Christ. And so we, we've had grace, 2,000 years of grace. But we're at the end of this thing, and there's a ship that's about to go down. And how many know... We are the ones with the life preservers. We are the ones that are going to cry out. And let me tell you something. If there was a fire and there were people in a house and they didn't know there was a fire, how many of you would begin to shout, get out of that house, it's about to burn? Well, how many know we're in a situation where people are about to, to go to hell and we've got to rise up and realize this is the hour. This is the day, and the flames are already coming up, and we have the answer. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It's time to press into the presence. It's time to press into the glory. It's time to quit playing church and be the church. It's time to get a hold of the Word of God like we've never got a hold of it before. It's time to rise up in faith like we've never had faith before. It's time to get a hold of the glory like we've never had the glory before. It's time to press into this hour. We've got to do it. You say, well, there's a lot of churches doing that. There aren't. We think they are, but, you know, uh, it, a lot of churches out there are, are, the sermons are not based in the Word. A lot of churches, the, the, the sermons are based in opinion and, and culture and all kinds of things. Uh, how many know we've got to be Word-based? But we also have to be worship-based if we're going to enter into the presence. 
if we're really going to enter in where it changes us, we've got to begin to say, you know what, Lord, change me. Like Evan Roberts did. Just, Lord, change me so the glory can be revealed in me. I want the glory revealed in me. I want the glory. Uh, we're, we're walking into Walmart and, and our glory is all over us and people notice it. People getting saved and healed just by our shadow going by. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. I'm talking about believing the Word. Not believing me. Believing the Word. What does the Word have to say about it? It says there's a great revival at the end of the age. And, and let me tell you something. I want to get a hold of every part of it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The glory. The mystery is the glory. That's what we lost. That's what Adam lost in the garden. He lost the glory. We got it back. Hallelujah. By the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Ooh, I said, thank you, Jesus. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5. I remember when uh, in the 90s, there was such a move of the river. A lot of people called it the river. Just the flow of the Holy Spirit. And, and it caused laughter. It caused people to fall down. I, I mean, churches that were stuffy became... Not stuffy. <laughs> I mean, I'm talking about the, just a divine move of God. Just a, a release where God just showed up and, and got a hold of people. Hallelujah. And, and uh, the power of God just moving and, and changing people. Well, there's been different waves. How many know there's been wave after wave after wave, but we're about to enter in to the tidal wave. Hallelujah. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25. Ephesians chapter 5. Uh, well, we read some of this Sunday, but we'll go ahead and read this. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. How many of the words important? That he might present it to himself a glorious church. Everybody say glorious church. Glorious. Not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without Blemish. Everybody say a glorious church. You know, a glorious church is a church filled with the glory. And how many know if we crave the glory, we'll be a glorious church. If we seek the presence of God, He'll show up big time. Amen? I remember I was preaching at the glorious church in Oklahoma, uh, Billy Brim Ministries, uh, uh, years ago. And uh, the glory of God was there. I mean, man, we had so many miracles, the power of God. Uh, every time I'd go to that church, the glory of God just fall in that place. Why? Because they desired it. They craved it. They were taught it. They prayed it. They believed it. So they received it. How many know if you're not, if you're not reading about it, you're not hearing about it, you're not, you're not looking at it, you're not praying for it, you won't be receiving it. But if you're truly receiving, you're truly seeking, you're truly desiring, you're truly getting a hold of the truth of it and getting a hold of the worship whereby you enter into it, you will be changed. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. Glory. A glorious church. You know, it's the glory that changes you. It's the glory of God that makes you without spot or wrinkle. Yeah, yes, it's the blood of Jesus on the cross. Amen. But it's the glory of God on you that causes you to walk in sanctification, to walk holy before your God. How many know when you enter into the presence of God, you don't want to sin? You're not thinking about sinning when you're in the presence of God because in the presence of God, there's fullness of joy. 
to say, I, I, I sinned yesterday. I know I did. I, I shouldn't have done it. I, I, it wasn't a big sin, but I know it was sin. And blah, blah, blah. Well, let me ask you a question. Were you in the presence of the Lord before you did that? Chances are you weren't. We've got to make up our minds that we are going to press into the presence of the Lord every day. Not just on Sunday, not on Wednesday night. I mean, not just on Wednesday night, but on Monday, Monday morning, Tuesday morning. When, every day pressing in. And it doesn't take 18 hours to get into the presence of God. It takes me approximately two seconds to get into the presence of God. It doesn't take you a long time to begin to worship and, and enter in and to to praise Him and, and to start to feel that presence coming on you. All you need to do is submit to the Holy Spirit. So as you submit to the Holy Spirit, the glory of God's going to come on you. Woo! And you know what? You don't want to sin. You don't even feel like sinning. And, and you know what? The more you don't sin, you don't feel like sinning. It's kind of like when you go on a vegetarian diet. And at first, you don't really want to eat them vegetables. But as you start to eat good stuff, your body begins to crave good stuff. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And that's really what happens. You, you begin to, you know, you put down the, the Twinkies and you put down the Snicker bar and you put down some of these other things and, and you start eating good food. Your body actually will uh, acclimate to that. Your body will start craving good food. Well, it's the same thing with sin. If you start getting in the presence of God every day, you do not want to sin, and you begin to not even desire it. Are you hearing what I'm saying? And I'm talking about all kinds of sin. I'm not talking about the worst kind of sins. Of, oh, you know, i got to stop murdering people or whatever. <laughs> but I mean, <laughs> I'm talking about, you know, anger, jealousy, fear. How many of fears of sin it said? It says that. I, there's all kinds of things that we do, sometimes we do them because we're just tired and we're, I'm tired. Normally I wouldn't be upset, but I'm tired. Well, what, <laughs> you have actually given yourself license to be angry. But how many know if you were in the presence of the Lord in that moment, you wouldn't have been angry. So we've got we've to spend more time in the glory. We've got to seek the glory every day. And as we do that, we will be without spot or wrinkle. Hallelujah. And that's what Jesus is coming back for. Amen? Glory be to God. I said glory. Now go back here to Ephesians chapter 1. Ephesians chapter 1. And uh, go to verse 17. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, everybody say, uh, the anointed and his anointing. I mean, Christ means the anointed and his anointing. Uh, it also means Messiah, but, but it, it's, it really comes from the anointed Messiah. It's, it's being anointed to be that, that uh, uh, title. And so it says uh, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, the Father of glory may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Him. Come on. <laughs> that the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of His calling and what the riches of the glory of the inheritance in the saints and what is the exceeding greatness of His power. The power is in the deutimous anointing glory of God. That you would know the exceeding greatness of His power to usward, that, that he's trying to put that glory, that power, that dunamis uh, power in you according to the working of his mighty power, which he wrought in Christ and set, and set him at his own right hand in heavenly places far above. Everybody say far above. Far above all principality and power and might and dominion and every name that is named not only in this world but also in that which is to come and has put all things, all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things where? To the church. 
which is his body, the fullness of him. His body is the fullness of him. His body is the fullness of him that fills all in all. We're talking about the glory in the body of Christ. How many would just say that the body of Christ would be filled with the glory? Amen. I mean, his body. If you saw him standing there, uh, that, well, at, at the transfiguration, uh, his, the glory came all over him and he shined like the sun. And, and, and a couple of disciples got to see that glory to God. Well, how many know we're about to shine like the sun? I said, we're about to shine like the sun. You know, when Moses saw the glory of God, he had to put a veil over his face because he, sh he, he shone with the glory. The Bible tells us so. The Bible says, well, I, I just can't believe that. Well, it's going to take faith. It's going to take faith that, that we're going to press into something. That we're, we're, we're not satisfied. We want more of Him. I want more of Him. Hallelujah. The glory of God's moving. I said the glory of God's moving. Oh, Hallelujah. The Father of glory, the Father of glory, give you revelation uh, and knowledge. The hope of His calling, called to glory. This inheritance, called to glory. The mighty power of God in us. Greater is He that is in you than he that is in the world. Turn with me to John chapter 14. John chapter 14. And go down here to verse uh, 10. Believe you not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak to you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwells in me, he does the works. Believe me, I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verily, verily, I say to you, he that believes on me, the works, the ones who believe on him, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works, greater works than these shall you do because I go to my Father. Greater works. Everybody say greater works. Greater works. The same glory, the same glory as Jesus had, you have. The same power that raised Christ from the dead dwells in you. The same glory that was in the Holy of Holies, that a pillar of fire came up, the glory of God, that the, the fire came down from heaven and consumed the brazen altar, the same glory that was on the temple is in you. Greater works shall you do. Well, that's for the pastor. That's for the evangelist. That's for, that's for somebody else. I, 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 I'm just a, 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 a... What? What are you? Are you a Christian? Christian means anointed ones. Well, I, you know, that's for somebody else. That's not for me. The devil's lying to you. It, it, there has to be a corporate anointing that'll make a difference in a city. I'm not talking about just a pastor or, or an evangelist. How many know it wasn't really the professors at Asbury University? It was the students. They got hungry. We've got to get hungry. And when we get hungry for the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will fill us like the temple of the Old Testament. Hallelujah. And, and greater. Somebody say greater. The same glory that was on Jesus is in us. Same Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. The same works. Greater works. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And go down here to... Uh, Second Corinthians chapter 12 and uh, verse 9. And he said to me, Jesus said, 
My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. No one has an excuse for not moving in the Spirit, not being used of the Holy Spirit. Wow. You see what it's saying? My strength is made perfect in weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ, the anointed and His anointing, may rest on me. Therefore, I take pleasure in infirmities and reproaches and in necessities, uh, in necessities, in persecutions, in distress for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. <laughs> God's not looking for a people that are strong in the Spirit. He's looking for a people that He can fill with His Spirit. And then they become strong. You know, it, we got this thing backwards. Well, you know, I'm a, I'm a dynamic, powerful, blah, blah, blah. Well, yeah, but what was your process of getting there? Was it man-made or was it God-made? Because let me tell you something. God's not looking for great people. He's looking for people that will submit to Him and that are weak, that He makes strong, that are emptied and He fills to overflowing. Amen? So never make an excuse, well, I can't be used of God. You're the perfect candidate because you're emptied out and now it's all him. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. Whoo. <laughs> the weak are about to shout, I am strong. And you know where that strength comes from is in the presence of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord, there's fullness of joy. The joy of the Lord is your strength. So we enter in that worship, that praise, that glory. And that's another thing. We need to begin to pray for for. Teams, not just one praise team, teams, praise teams. Come on, somebody. We're thinking too small. Praise teams, that, that we begin to believe for praise teams. Why? Because we're about to move into greater glory by the presence of the Lord that comes from praising Him. Hallelujah. Oh, and that joy. I'll never forget that student up there at Asbury University. As she, said, she said, you can't fake this joy. She said, it just, spirit of joy is on everybody. Glory to God. Whew. Hallelujah. Uh, amen. Go over here to uh, chapter uh, 3, 2 Corinthians chapter 3. Go down here to uh, verse 15. Thank you, Jesus. Deutimus power. Glory to God. Dynamic, miracle working power. 2 Corinthians. Chapter 3, verse 15. But even to this day, when Moses is read, the veil is upon their heart. Nevertheless, when uh, they shall turn to the Lord, the veil shall be taken away. Now, the Lord is that Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. But we all, with open face, beholding, as in a glass, the glory, if I say glory, the glory of of the Lord. Hallelujah. We're changed from glory to glory. We're changed every time we press in. We're changed. Every time uh, on a Monday morning, we're changed. Tuesday morning, we're changed. You got to get into a process where you keep doing this every single day, going from glory to glory. We're changed from glory to glory. Come on, somebody. And when we start getting changed from glory to glory, <laughs> Woo, we'll be dancing at Walmart. Glory to God. <laughs> now, I'm not talking about it, but we're acting squirrely. I, I'm talking about a reality. I'm talking about real joy, not manufactured joy. I'm talking about where you just can't hold it in anymore. <laughs> yeah. And it's real. And everybody knows it's real. That's the difference. I'm not talking about some squirrely stuff. No, I'm talking about the real thing. Amen? We become more like Christ, more like the anointed in His anointing.
from glory to glory and from faith to faith. Hallelujah. Do you know when you get filled up with the glory of God? How many know there's many fillings because you leak? <laughs> well, that's why you keep getting filled up. Hallelujah. Now, when you get baptized in the Holy Spirit, which is called the baptism of Jesus, not the baptism of John, which was water, the baptism of Jesus is the Holy Spirit. And so when you get filled with the Holy Spirit, you, you grieve. You can grieve the Holy Spirit, and, and, and it kind of goes down a little bit. You can quench the Spirit, but you get back in that presence, you begin to fill back up to overflow. Your cup needs to overflow. You, you are a cup that needs to overflow. Hallelujah. Do you know when you overflow in the glory of God, the enemy sees you? The enemy sees the real you, the spiritual you. The enemy sees your rank. The glory reveals your rank. You could be a just a you know, a private, first class, <laughs> private. Or you could be a general. But the Holy Spirit fills you to overflowing and that glory that's on you. The enemy knows your rank. When he walks up to you and you're going, you're not touching me, devil. And he knows you're a private. That's when he stumps on you. And you go, man, here I am again. Here I am again. Confession out of your mouth. Oh, he got me again. Oh, the devil's been on my back all week. I don't know how I'm going to survive. I don't know how I'm going to get this done. I don't know how it's going to work out. You know, you, he doesn't even really have to see that glory on you to know your rank. All he has to do is listen to you. As you get filled up in that glory, your words begin to change. You get filled up with that glory, he sees whether or not you're a corporal, maybe a, a sergeant, maybe a, you know, lieutenant. I, he begins to see your rank. He begins to see something about you that, mm, I think I better, I think I'll bother your neighbor. I think I'll go bother someone else. You look like you're dangerous. It's time to get dangerous. It's time to get, I, and I, I, I'm talking about in the spirit. I'm talking about where he knows not to mess with you. Amen? Well, how do you get there? Keep entering the presence. Keep going from glory to glory. Keep going from faith to faith. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. You know, deep down, you know what your rank is, too. It's time to move up. It's time to go to the next level. Amen? I'm going to end tonight in Ephesians chapter 3. Hallelujah. I want to go to the next level. I, I want to enter in. I, I'm, praise God. Ephesians chapter 3. Thank you so much, Judy. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16. That He would grant you according to the riches of His glory to be strengthened with might by His Spirit in the inner man. In the inner man. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith. How does He get there? You believe. That you being rooted and grounded in His Love. Come on, somebody. Woo! That you may be able to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the depth, and height, and to know the love, to know the joy, to know all the goodness of Christ, the anointed in His anointing, which passes knowledge that you might be filled with all the fullness of God, now to Him that is able to do exceeding, abundantly, above all that you could ask or even think according to the power. The power that works in us. The power of God's about to work in this church and in each individual from glory to glory. This is the hour and this is the day. 
and we're seeing glimmers, we're just little pieces, we're seeing little flames beginning, Asbury Revival, other universities are beginning to, there's something happening. I said, there's something happening. Somebody shout, there's something happening. Say, Holy Spirit, use me. Holy Spirit, fill me. I am pressing in to the presence of God. Lord, use me. Hallelujah. 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 The glory of God's coming down on each individual right now, just like cloven tongues of fire. Coming down on each of you right now. The glory of God's coming down on you right now. The glory of God's coming down. The glory of God's coming down right now. Fill up. Fill up. Oh, fill up to overflowing. Hallelujah. Woo! Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. Whoo! Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Amen.